Yorichi Shihoen is one of the first Shinigami that we encounter within Bleach. While for the majority of the early chapters of the manga she is in her cat form, we do later find out that she was the former captain of the second division, as well as the former leader of the Onmitsukido and the head of the noble Shihoen household. Despite her decorated background, we never really see Yorichi utilize her Zanpakuto throughout the entirety of the story. Instead, Yorichi adopts a more unconventional fighting style for a Shinigami as she relies primarily on Shumpo, earning herself the title of Flash Goddess. Shumpo or Flash Step is a high speed movement technique that is unique to the Shinigami. A lot of Bleach fans have been wondering what had happened to Yorichi Zanpakuto, and more importantly what are the Shikai and Bankai abilities that she is hiding. In today's video, I'm going to be deep diving into the possibilities of Yorichi Zanpakuto. I'll be discussing theories that I have about her Shikai and her Bankai. I'll be tying together everything that we learn about her possible abilities from the Bleach manga as well as the light novels, and all of the information that Kubo has revealed about Yorichi's abilities via his fan club club outside. So without further delay, here is my video uncovering the mysterious abilities of the one and only Flash Goddess Yorichi Shihoen. <laughs> Discover the Undead Collection and be amongst the very first to join us on our journey over at Getsugar.com. The relationship between a Zanpakuto and its Shinigami is a bond that lasts for a lifetime. The shape and abilities of a Zanpakuto are manifested from the wielder's soul. A Shikai is activated typically when a Shinigami learns the name of their Zanpakuto. This then allows both sword and wielder to become stronger together. Given that Zanpakuto are the trademark weapon of the Shinigami, I was really curious as to why somebody like Yoriichi does not rely on her blade. I mean, even a character like Kimpachi Zaraki was heavily reliant upon their Zanpakuto, even though he proved to have no relationship with his own blade. I have a theory that since Yorichi was born into the Shihoen household, one of the five great noble families, her Zanpakuto may well be an inherited divine blade. This is a Zanpakuto that is unique to a specific family rather than belonging to an individual Shinigami, and it's usually inherited by the head of that family across several generations. Examples of such a divine Zanpakuto include Muramasa, which belongs to the noble Kuchiki family, as as well as the Shinken Hakyoken, which belongs to the Issei family. And lastly, you have Enra Kyoten belonging to the Sunayashiro noble family. Within the Can't Fear Your Own World light novels, there is a scene where Tokinada Sunayashiro comes head to head with Yoriichi and Soifon. Being the villain that he is, Tokinada taunts Yoriichi about her not having her own Zanbakdo. It is a somewhat comedic, light hearted moment, and Yoriichi quickly retaliates as she states that she does in fact have her own Zanbakdo, but it is out of her own preference that she chooses not to utilize it, and she prefers to utilize an alternative style of fighting when she engages in combat. She even adds that she soothes her sulking Zanpakuto on a daily basis. Now, I strongly believe that these light novels are canon material, and Yoriichi was actually being honest here when she was speaking to Tokinada. This conversation puts to rest a lot of fan theories that Yoriichi may have lost her Zanpakuto at some point in time. Furthermore, there were some theories that Yoriichi had discarded a Zanpakuto during the Ten Back the Pendulum arc back when she had rescued Urahara from the Central 46. But these remarks from the Can't Feel Your Own World light novels finally reveal that she is still in possession of her Zanpakuto, as she states that she constantly needs to calm her Zanpakuto down because of her not utilizing it enough. Details like Yoriichi being a former captain of the Gotei 13 reveals that Yoriichi has some mastery over her Zanpakuto to the point of at least achieving Bankai. However, throughout the series, Yoriichi relies nearly exclusively on Hoho and Hakuda. Yoriichi is infamously known as being a master of Hoho or footwork. Hoho consists of maneuverability techniques which are unique to Shinigami. Now keep in mind, when we look at members of the stealth division, they are typically unarmed and they are shown with no Zanpakuto. You have to also consider the fact that Yoriichi is well regarded as one of the finest hand-to-hand -hand combatants within the Soul Society. Taking all of this into consideration, perhaps her Zanpakuto would provide no benefit 
it or even hinder her specific fighting style. Therefore, the theories that I speak about within this video are going to try to include plausible explanations as to why Yorichi Zanbakuto is never seen in battle. We see Yorichi take part in four major battles throughout the series. The first is with her protege Soifon, which occurs between chapters 154 to 155. And then we have her brief battle against Yami in chapter 194. And then her battle with Aizen during the fake Karakura Town arc between chapters 403 to 406. And lastly, her very memorable battle against Asken Naklova during the Thousand Year Blood War arc, which we see in chapter 656 and between chapters 662 to 664. Now, a common theme of Yoriichi's fighting style is that she loves to get up close and personal. This close quarters style of combat appears to be the norm for members of the stealth division. And Yoriichi, as the former commander of the stealth division, is no exception to this. Siphon is also seen to use a very similar close quarters style of combat, despite her frequently using her Shikai and even her Bankai. Whenever I think about Yoriichi Zanpakuto, it's hard not to think about Siphon Zanpakuto. In particular, her Bankai Jakuho Raikoben. Her incredibly destructive Bankai trades the stealth of a Shikai for a loud, destructive, oversized Bankai form, which is understandably very cumbersome for someone like Siphon to use. So we can deduce that Yoriichi Zanpakuto possibly gives her a similar disadvantage when it comes to close range combat. In order for Soifon to properly utilize her Bankai, she needs to in some way distract her opponent, as well as maintaining a distance between herself and her target, and lastly pray that her not-so-subtle blast that she fires off makes contact with her opponent. Because of the destructive power of Soifon's Bankai, she typically only has one or two chances to use it in battle, before her energy becomes depleted. It's for this reason that I deem Soifon's Bankai to be among one of the worst within the series. It's just way too cumbersome and it comes with its own fair share of limitations, which make you understand why Soifon only uses this power as a final resort. So before we continue our speculation on Yoriichi Zanpakuto, let's talk about a unique ability that she possesses. I'm of course referring to her cat transformation. This is a unique ability which allows her to shapeshift into a black cat at will. Thankfully, Kubo does reveal some insight into this transformation via his official fan club club outside. In question 331 that he answers, Kubo reveals that Yoriichi had initially developed this ability to transform into a cat for the sole purpose of sneaking around her family's mansion. Chapter 465 also reveals that Yoriichi's ability to transform into a cat is a quirk that is exclusive to the Shihoin family. Occasionally, Shihoin members are born with the ability to transform into a specific type of animal. It's important to understand the nature of Yoriichi's cat transformation, as it may have some hints about her Zanpakuto's shape and abilities. We know that some Zanpakuto can disguise themselves as other objects within their sealed state. We see this with Urahara and Head Captain Yamamoto as they disguise their Zanpakuto as canes. Analyzing some of these Shikai and Bankai transformations of some of the Shinigami may help us to better understand Yoriichi's abilities. Now, if a Shinigami has a small Shikai or a partial ability with their Shikai, then their Bankai is most likely going to be a completed version of their Shikai or just an oversized Bankai in general. We see this with individuals like Komomura, Renji, Gin, and even Soifon. Additionally, if a Shinigami's Shikai is projectile based, then their Bankai will be full of condensed Reiatsu, or it will be a melee type Bankai. We see this with Ichigo Zanpakuto Zangetsu as well as Head Captain Yamamoto Zanpakuto Ryujin Jaka. If there's a Shikai that has a partial change, then its Bankai form will be a completed transformation or a full manifestation just like Mayuri's Ashisogi Jizo. There are some Zanpakuto which have a positive effect in their Shikai state, while the Bankai proves to be an opposite of the Shikai. This is perfectly demonstrated with the Zanpakuto of Unohana Minazuki and also Soifon's Suzumebachi. Lastly, a target effect Shikai will become an area effect Bankai. This is definitely the case for Kaname Tozen's Suzumushi. Now, all of these points are important to keep in mind when we discuss Yoriichi's possible Zanpakuto. Seeing what Kubo has done in the past will help us to theorize some of the stuff that he's keeping hidden from us. So my first theory about Yoriichi's Zanpakuto is that she has a living type Zanpakuto. Now these types of blades are designed around the ability to generate living creatures that obey the wielder. The most obvious example of such a Zanpakuto would be Seijin Komomura's Tenken. Since Yoriichi has the ability to 
transform into a cat, my theory is based on this idea that a Zanpakuto has extremely feline qualities which I believe would manifest in some of its abilities as well as its shape and form. In terms of the Shikai release of this potential Zanpakuto, I believe that Yorichi Zanpakuto would dissolve into a shadowy shape that takes on the form of a cat. In this form, her Zanpakuto is able to mimic her movements using her Reiatsu, and it would also grant Yorichi some level of stealth as she would be able to hide from the sight of her opponent. My headcanon is that Yorichi is able to have such a Shikai because it lines up with her abilities that we see in the manga. Because while Yorichi is in her cat form, she can still channel her spiritual energy and move at incredible speeds. Despite her being physically limited in the body of an animal, I believe that Yorichi's Shikai transformation would grant her a complete disguise similar to Rangiku's Hainako. While Rangiku's Shikai uses ashes, I believe that Yorichi's Shikai would embrace the concept of shadows. So continuing on with this first theory that I have about a Zanpakuto, I believe in a Bankai form, her Zanpakuto would transform into a pure white large sword. It would have a proper hilt and guard, which is shaped after a broadest triskelion. I think that the Zanpakuto in its size and length would be equal to Tensa Zangetsu. In its Bankai form, Yorichi can summon an obscenely large dark cat monster into existence. The purpose of a Bankai is to completely engulf her enemy's spiritual pressure. I think that Yorichi would manifest a miniature shrine which she sits inside of while meditating. The Bankai's power would then be seen as pulsating waves of light that expand outward from her. In addition to this, once it has absorbed the spiritual pressure of one of its targets, the cat then transforms into an exact copy of the person, even mimicking speech and body movements. I think this would be a very effective tactic which would confuse her opponent as Yorichi is able to mimic multiple targets once she acquires enough spiritual pressure. However, the more spiritual pressure that her Bankai absorbs, the more massive that it becomes. And I think that this will be similar to Komamura's Tengen Myo, thus forming a bit of a disadvantage for Yorichi as her Bankai becomes a larger target for her opponent to attack. I believe that the next stage of this Bankai would be trapping her opponent into a circular stage, similar to a 2D fighter game stage. This would force herself and her opponent to remain in close range of each other. This small area of combat would force the two opponents to chase after each other, similar to tigers chasing after each other in a circle. Now the nature of this ability is similar to Shunsui's Katen Kyokotsu, only that this Bankai brings only a single game to life, which would be the game of tag. I believe that a Bankai such as this one would be a massive weakness to Yoriichi if it became too massive to move around at lightning fast speeds. This of course is in reference to the creature her Bankai would manifest, with it absorbing its opponent's Reiatsu in order to transform into a perfect copy of them. As we all know, Yoriichi is considered to be the most proficient Hoho master even in all of the Soul Society. In chapter 154, we see how Yoriichi has mastered this ability to the point where she can appear to be in several places at once, and she is even able to wipe out an entire stealth division squadron in just mere seconds. Additionally, using such a large and cumbersome Bankai would come at the cost of her speed. If Yoriichi is able to utilize abilities such as Utsusemi, which she uses in chapter 299, that she doesn't really need to use the Shikai of a Zanpakuto, which gives her stealth. If she is already able to generate a lot of speed and make herself difficult for an opponent to catch without even using a Zanpakuto. My second theory, which I think is a bit more plausible, involves Yoriichi wielding a lightning type Zanpakuto. The only other person within the Soul Society to have a lightning type Zanpakuto was Chojiro Sasakibe. And while it was only briefly shown to us in chapter 504, this was expanded upon within the anime via some anime exclusive scenes. Now this second theory about Yoriichi Zanpakuto is based upon her technique of Shunko which she reveals in chapter 158. She uses this technique against Soifon and it's a power that enhances Hakuda with Kido. Users of Shunko have their arms, shoulders and back covered in elemental Kido energy. Within both the anime and the manga, Yoriichi's Reiatsu takes the form of white lightning whilst using this power. We are shown an enhanced version of her Shunko during Yoriichi's battle against Asken in chapter 656. It is referred to as Shunko Raijin Senke. Whilst in this form, the lightning that is emitted from Yoriichi's back creates a circle of electrical energy as she unleashes a giant column of concentrated electrical energy in order to engulf her opponent. Now, applying this power to her potential Zanpakuto, I believe that these lightning bolts that she generates can be used effectively 
effectively within the context of a Zombok Do. So with this Zombok Do theory, when her Shika is activated, the blade of Yoruichi Zombok Do is turned white hot as it begins to emit small bolts of lightning. These flashes of lightning chase down Yoruichi's opponent as they begin to reduce their spiritual pressure. Yoruichi is able to control the direction of her lightning during the first release of her Zombok Do. We could also speculate that Yoruichi's Shikai is similar to Kensei's, like it may be able to transform into a weapon that Yoruichi wields which emits lightning to strike her enemies. The respective Bankai form of this lightning type Zompok Do would create a massive draconian tiger beast which bears a strong resemblance to Yoruichi in a cat form. This beast is literally made up of lightning and it moves and attacks at astonishing speeds and if her opponent merely touches this beast then it electrocutes them persistently. I think that the weakness of such a Bankai is that it gets smaller and weaker the longer that it is activated. Another weakness of this Bankai would be that it would indiscriminately target anyone on the battlefield with the lightning bolts. Another limitation would be that the lightning bolts would not have a lasting effect on someone who has a lot of spiritual pressure such as Aizen, Kimpachi, or even Ichibe. I would theorize that the lightning bolts would literally bounce off of their bodies rendering the attack wholly ineffective. Now my third theory about Yoriichi Zanpakuto is based on the fact that Yoriichi is always on the offensive. So maybe she wields a defensive type Zanpakuto which is designed around defensive capabilities with little or no offense. This also could build upon the idea that the noble Shihoin family are the keepers of divine Zanpakuto and divine tools said to have been bestowed upon them by the gods. Now this defensive type Zanpakuto in its Shikai form I believe would take on the shape of a massive shield which counteracts any attacks from Yoriichi's enemy. Its size will be comparable to Yoriichi's own height and it would definitely hinder her movements. In its Bankai form, this Zanpakuto would transform Yoriichi's shield into a heavy metal body armor, similar to what she wears in her battle against Aizen from the Fate Karakura Town arc. However, this time it's not only her hands and feet that are covered, it's her entire body. Her Reatsu or spiritual pressure would increase and the armor would begin to emit a glow that can be seen by most of her enemies. And this glow would be blinding and give Yoriichi somewhat of an advantage in battle. Maybe Yoriichi would not like to use this type of Zanpak Do because it doesn't allow her to be stealthy at all, especially if she's emitting a blinding glow. Therefore, she would be severely hindered in hand-to-hand -hand combat, with her not being able to sneak up on her opponents, and with her being heavily weighed down with this massive armor that she is wearing. My final theory for a Zanpak Do is that Yoriichi has a power type Zanpak Do. Upon the release of its Shikai, it transforms itself from its usual form into an enormous warhammer, which is nearly as large as Yoriichi herself, with a head that is roughly the size of an engine block. Despite it being really bulky and heavy, it carries enormous power, being able to crack stone and pulverize her opponents with a single attack. Yoriichi can increase her Shikai's power even further by spinning the hammer similar to Ikaku's Bankai. When the hammer is spun around, it would crack and sparkle with electricity, which is focused on the head of the hammer. And when she launches an attack, all of the generated electricity would be discharged, creating an incredibly powerful attack, which would simulate a localized earthquake whenever she attacks with this generated power. Despite the incredible power of this Shikai, Yoriichi despises it because it's impossible to use stealthily, and it's far too heavy and it throws off her balance when she is using Shumpo. It is also really loud when she uses it, so it isn't suited to her stealthy style of fighting. With this type of Zanpak Do, I doubt that Yoriichi would sacrifice all of her other skill set just to use an incredibly powerful weapon that has a lot of raw power. Now, similar to Soifon's Bankai, I think that Yoriichi's Bankai would be severely limited in this form. I think that it would allow Yoriichi to generate a lot of powerful lightning energy, which she can disperse off into a single attack, which she can fire towards her opponents at long range. Again, this type of Bankai would be absolutely useless in a stealthy scenario, and it would not mesh well with her preferred fighting style. Now these were just a few theories and they are based upon this principle of Yoriichi Zanpakuto being cumbersome or not convenient for her to use with her Zanpakuto not complementing her fighting style. Yoriichi had trained Soifon not to be completely reliant on her Zanpakuto. We've seen Yoriichi in some of the most important battles in the series not even use her Zanpakuto at all. This makes me feel as though Yoriichi and her Zanpakuto spirit may not get along or her Zanpakuto abilities are more trouble than they are worth. Soifon does find herself in a very similar situation, but when she is pushed to her very limits, she still does end up 
using her Bankai, which has proven to be very effective in her battles against Baragon as well as BG9. Now this notion of a Shinigami not getting along with a Zanpakuto is not unheard of. We see this with Hisagi not really getting on with his Zanpakuto, or even Yumichika referring to his Zanpakuto with a incorrect name. Also, Urahara has commented on how Benihime isn't always cooperative with him. So maybe Yoriichi just has a troubled relationship with a Zanpakuto. With Yoriichi having been trained excessively in Shumpo and Hakuda, she firmly believes that her body is probably the only weapon that she will ever need. I presume that she would have been honing and training her own fighting style well before she had received an Asauchi and had imprinted her soul onto it. So while it's difficult to actually assume what Yoriichi's true Zanpakuto is, in this video I've tried to make similarities and parallels to Soifon's situation with her Zanpakuto. These are four of the best theories that I was able to come up with, but I am interested to know what all of you think about Yoriichi's Zanpakuto. We definitely know that she has mastered her Zanpakuto to the point of attaining Bankai because she was the former captain of the second division, but unfortunately we have little to no idea what her true Shikai or Bankai is. If you agree with some of the ideas that I proposed in this video, then definitely let me know by continuing the discussion in the comments. I'd love to know all of your thoughts about Yoriichi Zanpakuto, what are your own personal theories, I really look forward to reading all of your thoughts, and lastly, thank you for making it to the end of this video, and I cannot wait to see you in my next Bleach video. A massive thank you goes out to all of my amazing Patreon supporters for helping to make this video possible. If you also want to support the channel and see your name in the end of my videos, then check out my Patreon which has loads of perks like early video access and so much more. Thank you for sticking around till the end of the video and whatever you contribute will mean a lot to me.